everyone, welcome to another episode of Nozer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am your host as usual, Jason Azevedo, on this fine Sunday afternoon um, leading into the evening uh, and early afternoon for a lot of you and other times, depending on your time zone. Uh, hope all is well. Hope everyone is staying safe. Today we will be painting the D&D Drow, which will be a lot of fun. Um, that is in preparation or to uh, add to our awesome uh, Tides of Wildmount campaign that is happening on Monday nights. Tomorrow night is episode number 10, I believe, or 11. I've lost track. Um, but one of our PCs or the NPCs that have joined our PCs from our Revelry Pirates is Janice and Yana, um, and they are drow. So we are adding them to the painting stuff. For tonight, the chat, as usual, is crazy. We already have a hype train going, which is nuts. Um, welcome, everyone. If you have a question tonight, uh, if you can write question in caps uh, so that the moderators can see it. And, um, of course, as usual, Shad will be listing all the questions for me so that I can track along with all of the questions you guys have. So I don't necessarily have to be on... Um, on in the chat kind of sorting through and I can focus on painting. So thank you, Shad. And of course, Prometheus Bound for moderating and doing such an incredible job. A couple quick announcements. Uh, tomorrow night, the next episode of Tides of Wildmount, uh, they are entering a jungle temple, um, which is super exciting and super fun. Um, you can check that out. If you haven't seen last week's episode, you may want to do that. Um, and we are nearing the end of this uh, season and then we will go back into our Chris of Strahd campaign which of course is into the mist which a lot of you have been waiting with bated breath for we're very excited to jump back into that um if you're if you like what you see tonight um if you want to subscribe using either twitch prime or add tier one tier two or tier three subscription on twitch we will enter you into the revelry which is a private group of pirates that we have on our discord and you guys can uh, role play and uh, we actually have pirates in the revelry um upgrading ships and spending bits to do things to their ships and then going out on quests uh, and, and stuff. So it's a lot of fun. You can find out all the information on our Discord from our mods. They will answer whatever questions you have. And I have really bad allergies this time of year. So bear with me while I sniffle and all of that stuff through this. Uh, and of course, Gary Diamond's one of the pirate, uh, one of the captains uh, is actually currently... Uh, he's actually the captain of the Deceitful Squid, and he is uh, gifting subs, I think, to um, to uh, recruit people for his ship, which is really great. Um, thank you, of course, to Dungeons & Dragons for hosting us. We are live on the Dungeons & Dragons Twitch and on the Realm Smith Twitch. Um, and we are also uh, want to thank uh, WizKids, of course, for the incredible miniatures that we paint every single week. And we also want to thank Vallejo for the incredible game color paints that we continue to partner with them on and uh, provide these uh, tutorials because of, because they allow us to make this happen. It takes resources to do this, and so it's incredibly helpful, not only for your subs, but also for our sponsors. Dean Nicole is gifting a ton of subs tonight. Thank you, Dean Nicole. That's very sweet. You guys are incredible. Um, all right, let's jump in. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. So Monday night is Tides of Wild Mount. Tuesday night is um, behind the screen. Uh, we don't have a guest lined up, finalized just yet, but I'll let you know as soon as we do, hopefully by tomorrow night. And then uh, Thursday's Players Table with Joel Oje, and then back to this next Sunday. All right. I think that's all of it. Uh, let's go to Tools of the Trade. So as usual, for Tools of the Trade, we need the Drow Miniatures. Uh, from D and D by WizKids. Of course, we're going to use some brushes tonight. We're using Vallejo brushes. We'll be using a zero, a number one, and a number two brush, as well as a number four dry brush, um, which will allow us to do some dry brushing if we need to. Not sure if we'll have to, but we will absolutely uh, jump into that. Um, we also have water, of course, for diluting your paints and washing your brushes, paper towel for cleaning off your brushes, and of course, a paint palette for holding your paints as usual. For our paint list, uh, it actually shares a lot of the same paints as we had last week uh, for the drider that we did. 
um, which was highly asked about and requested, so we wanted to make sure that we got that done. Um, so we have heavy sienna for a lot of the kind of uh, dark leather brown areas. That is a great base color. We have tan for highlighting those areas. We have leather brown for, of course, leather areas. Glorious gold, uh, gunmetal, and silver, all for creating the metallic areas. Somber gray, steel gray uh, for the skin. And then, of course, heavy violet and warlock purple for a lot of the clothing. Then we have just some um, extra colors like heavy blue gray, dead white, bone white, and I think that's, and the black wash, of course, for a lot of the things that we add onto there. All right, jumping right in here. I did get Lumio working, so we do have the, if you subscribe or follow us tonight, following this little um, potion bottle will blink once purple. If you subscribe, it'll blink twice, I believe. Um, and if you use bits, it'll also blink blue. So blue for subs, purple for, and I missed all those streaks and all of those gifted subs and all of those wonderful things. Um, but, uh, but as it moves forward, that will continue to happen. Thanks guys for all of your support. Okay, so we have two miniatures to paint tonight. I'm back to painting multiple minis. Um, and these are the cool drow minis from Dungeons and & Dragons and WizKids. Um, one of them is a drow fighter, I'm assuming, and this one is more of a rogue fighter. Not sure, but this will be Janus and Yana, respectively, um, as we move forward into the, or move forward with the campaign that we're currently running. Uh, a lot of fun, and thank you for the sub. Look at that. Uh, all of the subs just go nuts here. All right. Um, okay, let me just get the questions up on my screen here so that I can... More subs. Man, you guys. I tell you, you guys are awesome. So great. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Questions for... Here it is. Thank you. All right, already a question from the D and D chat from Silver Sapphire thirty six. Question: How can I start up on D and D as a new player who doesn't have any previous experience? That's a great question. Um, before I answer that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start painting some of the metal areas. Um, there's quite a bit of metal on this miniature, um, and on this one. And uh, sometimes when you do metal, it kind of goes into the other areas. So let's start with that as a base coat it's all also the kind of deepest areas of this miniature as well so that'll give us a good nice kind of starting point and if we look at the reference here he's got a lot of metal on him so we're going to start with gunmetal it is a vallejo game color paint add a little bit of it to our very messy uh, palette because i have bad palette etiquette uh, and uh we're going to go ahead and use a number two brush because again this is the first all these subs, holy mother. It's great. Uh, great question. So the first answer I'd give to that uh, of how you get started in D&D if you're brand new is um, if you kind of want to see if it's for you and kind of understand the addition and all of that kind of stuff, uh, watching live stream play is a great way to kind of familiarize yourself with a lot of the lingo and the rules and all of that kind of stuff. I actually learned how to DM for uh, fifth edition by watching Critical Role and just kind of um, absorbing rules um, through watching it. Uh, so that is a suggestion for a while you're kind of finding a way to play. Another way to play is um, on Roll20. There is right now, especially with the social distancing and quarantine, um, things are opening up here, folks, so we do have good news uh, in the near future for Realmsmith. But um, you can go online. For Roll20 is a great way to, and Fantasy Grounds actually as well, are two great ways to play D&D online. Um, and you can find groups to do that right from the applications. But if you go to our Discord, we also have a looking for a game sort of uh, experience. Um, and you can find all that information out on our Discord um, if you go there and check it out. Uh, there is uh, lots of lots of opportunities for kind of online play. 
Uh, another way to play, of course, is at local uh, game stores when they open up and you're actually allowed to kind of be in the same room as other people. Um, that is one way for pe that people really enjoy uh, playing together, and that's a great way to kind of find out. So check out your local game stores, find out if they have D&D campaigns happening, and if they do, you can join there, uh, and that's a great way to allow it to happen. Another way, if you want to DM, um, which is Dungeon Master, if you want to run a game and host it for your friends, a great way to do that would be to start, get grab one of the starter kits from Dungeons & Dragons. Um, they have a number of them, and you can look them up at your local game store, and barring that, you can look them up on uh, Amazon as well and online distributors, but of course support your local game stores, especially during this time, as they need it. Um, and uh, and then the other way, uh, we, we do have kind of an, uh, a great community on our Discord who actually play D&D kind of in the chat. And we do run quests and stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can go to our Discord. Even before you subscribe to find out if you're kind of interested in it or if it's for you, um, you can go ahead and um, join our Discord. The link will be in the chat and uh, you can ask all kinds of questions there to find out how the revelry works and how we can kind of help you get into D&D. So those are a bunch of different ways you as a new player and or somebody who's new to D&D period can kind of find out what's what uh, and get involved. Um, sometimes it is hard to find a group kind of in person depending on where you live and what your friends are into and all that kind of stuff. So um, sometimes... Uh, you know, going a different way about it is the easiest way to, to, to do it. Uh, get a little creative on it. So, like I said, I'm taking uh, gun metal and I am just base coating all of the metal areas. I'm not worried at this point about overbrush uh, or getting areas that shouldn't be gun metal because we will be covering those with uh, other colors later. So, not worried at all. Okay, now he also has metal bracers. He's just full of metal as a fighter. Makes sense. Probably gonna do his gloves a different color, but for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it all gunmetal, and then I can pick out different areas later if I need to. Get a sword as well. There we go. Again, I apologize for the sniffles, guys. It is allergy season for me. And apparently, Bruno the Tavern Dog has something to say about that, too. I don't know if you guys heard that in the background. All right. Um, another question from the D&D chat. Aquariana13196 asks, What's your favorite race class combo? That's a good question, actually. Um, right now, my current PC... Uh, that right now it's on, um, we're just taking a break from Dragon's Bane, but my current PC is a Dragonborn Monk. Um, I love kind of, I don't like playing typical race class combos, um, but I love kind of mixing it up. So that to me is something that's kind of different um, that I wanted to kind of play. So uh, I don't like, like I said, stereotypical sort of combinations. Some do, and that's great. Uh, me, not so much. Um, so right now, I'm, I'm really loving Dragonborn Monk. It's a lot of fun. Um, I would love to play like an... Uh, I, um, not Isla. Uh, uh, Kali, uh, Mel, played uh, Kali, who is an Asamar rogue. I thought that was a really cool idea. The idea of kind of a celestial kind of with a with a bit of a sneaky dark side that's a lot of fun i'd love to play a warlock I'm not sure what race but a celestial warlock so somebody who is beholden to a to a god uh, of good somehow it would be a lot of fun for me stuff like that i like mixing it up challenging myself a little bit uh, i think i find that kind of thing a little bit fun Okay, so that is, oop, keep hitting the camera as usual here, folks. <laughs> Trying to get nice and tight in here for you so you can see what's going on, but 
unfortunately, sometimes that means I, sn I smack the camera with my my brushes, so apologize for that. All right. Cool. So while that dries, I'm going to go to Iana, or the female drow here. From the D&D chat, another one. Uxla Fit asks, are those minis pre-primed? Yes, they are. So, all WizKids miniatures um, come pre-primed uh, right out of the box. So literally just before I start painting on the show, I will crack it open, which I did with this one, and they come pre-primed. I, I paint them right out of the box. Uh, I don't. You can clean them up a bit if you want to. I usually decide not to. Uh, you know what? I'm doing... She's supposed to be a rogue, so I started doing her legs sort of a metal color. I'm going to stop that, actually. Stop it right now. And I am going to... Um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Her metal is kind of going to be a highlight afterwards, so I'm going to leave her kind of the way she is. But for her, kind of the most prominent deep kind of color it's going to be this kind of leathery leathery armor so I think I'm going to get out my leather brown here right there and I'm going to start by adding some Leather brown areas. Now this, I'm gonna kind of make her her shirt area leather brown, and her shoulder guards with their pauldrons. We'll get some leather. Leather brown. also listening to Sirenscape, folks. This is the uh, Flooded Cavern sound set from Sirenscape, if you can hear it in the background. It's just very subtle, but we like to add a little bit of mood while we paint here. There we go. I apologize again for the sniffles. It is... Tough time of year for me, as far as allergies go. And again, I'm not too concerned about getting paint on areas that aren't the leather armor because they're still primed and basically what we're doing is we're filling in any possibility or avoiding any possibility of um, kind of, uh, of the primer showing through in the recesses here so This is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, just like took some allergy meds, but not working. Not quite working. Okay. Just gonna do kind of the leg guards, the greaves. And then once I'm done with that, Go back to um, Janice. There we go. And I think 
like a decent coverage on that. Pretty happy. And we've also got bracers. Now, we may come back and highlight these with some different colors after if we find it's too much of a leather brown color. But for right now, works for me. Basically, we're just laying down base coats here. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's place her down for a second, and we'll go to another question. Oh, Snap It Snap asks, are the monthly boxes starting to ship again now that this whole thing is getting back to normal? Um, well, it's not quite back to normal for us yet. Uh, shipping is still tough, um, and we're still trying to figure it all out. So unfortunately... Uh, we don't have any good news about that yet, but definitely stay posted as we kind of move forward um, through this time. Okay, um, let's see, he's got some... Looks like... We're going to go to like the dark brown areas, I think, at this point. Um, yeah... So using heavy sienna, and this is a heavy paint. It's an extra opaque paint, which uh, is basically, go, it's, it's designed for base coats. It'll go on in one coat. That is kind of the design of it or the intention. Um, and they're really, really awesome. Um, Leah Sim the Learn asked, have you ever physically modified a mini, mini? And if so, how much have you changed one? I haven't actually much. I was going to with some of our PCs because the WizKids uh, minis weren't exactly what uh, our characters look like. So I was going to uh, affect them, or, or but I didn't actually. I just left them the way that they were. Decided it was better off that way. Um, I used to do it a lot in Wargaming. Um, that was a, that's a hobby that calls for kit bashing and modifying um, and, all, and customization, but um, I haven't... I haven't done that yet in D and D. I don't think. Um, if I can think about it, I have built up some like bases with some real, like world textures, stones and sand and things like that. So if that's considered a modification, I've, I've done that. Uh, but I haven't heavily. I haven't done it much. I am gonna make this kind of under area here of the of the leather of the armor sorry kind of a leather color uh, a dark leather because I imagine it would all be held together with leather especially this chain mail here so I'm gonna go ahead and make that leather brown to me that makes sense Uh, Malgath asks, um, oh no, not Malgath, Malgath is, <laughs> sorry, is um, Shad, who is our moderator, but he posted a question from Roman Wolf 7 asks, what's your least favorite race or class? Least favorite? I don't know if I have a least favorite. Um, least favorite. I don't know. Uh, that's a great question that I'll, I'll have to think about. Um, for a bit because I do find that every race and class has its place and I know that sounds like a kind of a politically correct response but it's actually how I feel I feel like every type of person and every type of creature every type of class has kind of a role to play in the world um, and have kind of has their moments to shine so for me there I don't have really a, a least favorite class hmm I'd have to think about that, but for right now, that is my honest answer. My honest answer is that I think that everything has its place, um, and you can make anything work in the narrative. Uh, I mean, the least I like to play, let's put it that way. So personally, what I like to like enjoy playing the least are kind of 
pure spellcasters. I've never been a spellcaster kind of player. Um, I'm just, it's a lot of math and, and administration, things that I'm not, that I don't quite enjoy in a D&D kind of setting, so, um, and aren't, aren't my strength. So for that case, I guess I would say that, you know, wizards, sorcerers, things like that, um, aren't really, I am sorry, I'm just, whew. um, yeah. Things like that are probably my least favorite to play, but I love making NPCs for them, of them. Um, I love what it brings to the game. I love it when other people play them. So, yeah, there's nothing I really don't like from like just like a rules perspective necessarily. Um, like I said, as a DM, I tend to you tend to make everything work. Uh, they're all tools within your kind of toolkit. I'm also going to paint the border around his leg kind of armor, this brown as well. Again, I'm just kind of adding in some differentiation, some detail. So rather than being just kind of like a sea of metal, then it's a bit more interesting. Then, okay, so that is, that is that. So I'm going to put Janice down. I'm going to pick up Yana, who is now kind of all of that leather is dry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the opposite. So I'm going to use some heavy sienna for her pants here. which I may have to take it off, take her off the base for. Um, just like that, and then around the corner. For the under area, I'm gonna have to use, take it off the base so I can reach it. Uh, from the D&D chat, we have Silver Sapphire 36 asks, are demons a playable race? And do you have any tips for making a character? So I don't, demons themselves, I've never seen as a playable race, but of course the closest is a tiefling. Tiefling is like a tiefling, sorry, is like a descendant of a demon um, or a devil. Um, and so you can check that out in the player's handbook. Again, I, I would love to play like a super goody goody tiefling that's different than, than the typical kind of, uh, the way that you imagine a tiefling would, would be. Um, that kind of stuff I find very interesting. That's what I would do. Uh, but yeah, lots of tips for playing tieflings online, um, in YouTube, uh, in the YouTubes, as well as, um, as well as other mediums um, in book form, the D&D handbook itself. Player's handbook has lots of kind of tips and, and explanations of how to play each race. So that's where I would suggest taking a look for that sort of information. All right, so that is the, I actually also need to paint her um, crossbow with this heavy sienna as I want kind of a deep wood color for this. And then I'll go back and detail it with some metal and such for the bolt tips and the mechanics and all that stuff. Spikes on the front. I'm also gonna do her, her gloves. Heavy CN as well. Cool. 
Aquariana13196 uh, asks, how long have you been playing D&D uh, and painting minis, respectively? Apologies for my long name. Feel free to call me Aqua. Okay, Aqua. Um, I've been playing D&D, so I started playing D&D when I was 12 or 13 years old with my buddies uh, in junior high. And that was kind of my first foray into D&D. And I fell absolutely, totally in love with it at that age. I played for a number of years and then took a long break. Um, just got into video games, started working in video games, and they kind of became my life a little bit um, as, ten, as a passion turned to career tend to do. Um, I was a game designer for a long time and then um, kind of touched into D&D from time to time, uh, but mostly in popular kind of you know, fantasy medieval settings. So in the books that I read or kind of the, the other kind of games, so the video games I played um, with obvious um, Skyrim and, and a number of other ones were always kind of a, a love of mine, even though I wasn't playing D&D. Uh, my love for D&D and the way that it kind of started in my life really um, educated my hobbies uh, and, and kind of my interests in video games and the kinds of video games, action RPGs and such. Uh, Fable was another big one that I really enjoyed on the Xbox. Um, and so I took a long break and then about four years ago, uh, two buddies of mine and I um, were at a party and um, we decided, hey, you know what? It's been so long since we've played D&D. We should totally try and, and start playing again. And uh, that one thing led to the other. We started playing in a basement and then I started recruiting other friends to play as well. And they got into it. And then here we are four or so years later. Um, which is, which is crazy. So just pretty awesome. So I've been playing for, you know, technically I started playing when I was a teenager, but really hardcore for the last four or five years or so. It's kind of when I came back onto it. Uh, and then painting, um, painting minis. I, I, I started painting, uh, kind of, a, uh, war gaming minis. So... I started really getting into painting. So I painted some minis when I was a kid. I painted like old Ralpartha metal pewter minis um, back in the day. And that's kind of where my love of painting kind of started. And then I stopped for a long time again. And then when Games Workshop came out with the Lord of the Rings miniatures, uh, I got super into that uh, and painting all of the Lord of the Rings minis from Games Workshop based on the films. Um, and not because I was playing the game necessarily, just because I loved miniatures. I love the miniatures and I love painting them. So I did that, join, uh, you know, um, kind of ran some or uh, joined some contests uh, and ended up coming like second in Canada or something with one of my minis and won like $4,000 worth of, of Lord of the Rings minis. And that set me up and I was off. Um, and then I got into Warhammer and a bunch of other kind of um, military kind of strategy, tactical uh, Wargaming, and then D&D came back to the table, and then I realized, holy crap, the wealth of miniatures that they had for D&D was pretty staggering and incredible, and I was like, okay, this is where I can finally kind of find my, my miniature painting home, so that's where I have been for the last four years or so, very happily. Okay, um... I am going to go ahead and start to paint her cloak and kind of her sash area. Um, we're going to go with a heavy violet. Again, heavy opaque paint. And for me, it's hard to do a drow without uh, some purple, um, as is common to their race. Okay, MJ Cook asks, I've been watching some other mini painters tutorials on YouTube and noticed some of them lick stick with a brush in their mouth. Why do they do this? <laughs> I have never been a brush licker. Um, they do it to keep a point on their brush. It's my understanding. Sometimes they, they you know, they say that the saliva kind of helps it flow. I mean, more power to them. Whatever makes it work. I just have never been one to do that. Um, but I think it's to keep a, a tip on your brush. Um, maybe to clean it, but I'm not super positive that's the case. So, 
uh, but I would absolutely ask them <laughs> why they do it. But I know a lot of kind of old school painters do it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just never, I never got into that technique for whatever reason. And I'm just going ahead, like I said, with this heavy violet, and I'm going around the entire mini and painting all of the fabric this color. You can see Janice and Yana at, in action. Um, this coming Monday, tomorrow night, on the Tides of Wildmount in our campaign. They are played by our production staff, our production crew, Josh and Julian, who do an incredible job. They're also moderators on our Discord and greatly loved by our community. So I wanted to show them some love and paint them some minis and that they can feature while they play on the guests on our stream. They're probably at home saying, she doesn't like purple. That's not her color. She's an autumn. Sorry, my mom was a Mary Kay consultant, so kind of stuck. There we go. Uh, I'm also going to do the cloak as well. We'll go from there. Aqua, another question from Aqua. What can you do when you make a mistake on a mini? Paint remover, hydrochloric acid, or paint over it? Yes. So um, for me, if you notice you made a mistake right away, um, I grab another brush that has not been used, um, and I try and wipe the paint off quickly. Sometimes it'll go. Sometimes you'll have to wet it, and you have to kind of... Like an eraser, if I were to make a mistake, grab another brush real quick, wet it quick, and then and then use that to wipe it off. So that's that's the quickest, easiest way. If you've found out and hasn't kind of dried yet, if it's still wet on the mini, sometimes you can kind of uh, brush it off. And depending on how long it's been on the miniature for, will really determine how long it takes to get it off the miniature. Um, the other way is I would never use um, like a paint remover. This is why I do a lot of my base coating first before I um, go on to detail work is in case I make any mistakes and go over, I can rebase coat that area and it's easy. It's just one color rather than repainting a really detailed area of a miniature. Um, but um, yeah, but for me, um, I would just repaint areas of it. I would never. I have never stripped a miniature and started over again. I'm just not that type of person. Once it's done, it's done for me, and I move on to kind of the next shiny thing. <laughs> but that's just my kind of approach. Some people are a bit more sticklers for, you know, or perfectionists when it comes to certain things, and and feel that they need to kind of go back in and and make it better. And I respect that, um, but that's that's not me. So. If you did want to strip a miniature that was painted that you'd like to paint again, you can always use simple green, I've been told, is the way to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if the paint isn't too thick on the miniature, you could also just prime over the paint and then repaint it is also an option. Get all of this heavy violet piece. These extra opaque paints are really great. Um, anybody who's used them will swear by them. They're really cool and they cover so well in one coat. Now behind the cloak here is always a little difficult. You don't wanna paint the back of the miniature and her armor in this case, but you can see that I am making a bit of a mess of some of the armor areas. So before I go ahead and start to highlight and wash it, I'll go back in and touch those up here and there. I hate sniffling on camera, it's so annoying. Sorry guys. It's gross. 
close. All right. But that is the time of year for me. Almost done. Trying to get into all of these spots on that. There we go. Done. So you can see. And then I'll go ahead and also do the bottom of our kind of skirt area. It's called a skirt. I don't know what you would call this. It's got to have a name. It's almost like a tabard bottom, but tabard would indicate the whole kind of length. So I don't know what to call it. All right, so that is pretty solidly covered. Nice, solid base coat on that of purple. And we're just gonna put that down for a sec. And we're gonna pick up Janus. And his cloak is also going to be purple. And of course, we're gonna add a wash to all of this, which will bring out a lot of the detail and add some shadows. And then we will go from there. See there, I ended up getting a little bit of purple on the back of his leg. I'm gonna go in with my larger dry brush and a little bit of water. It's a clean dry brush and I'll just do that and look, it's gone. That's the way I deal with immediate oopses. Question from the D&D chat. Polytechnics asks, if you were to do a new design for drow elves, maintaining the traditional canon that they followed an evil goddess and were, and were psychologically changed by it, how would you concept them? Oh, that is a deep question. I like those. Um, I don't know. Um, I've never thought about that, and that would take some kind of time for me to think about, but I do love what um, Matt Mercer's done with the drow in Wildmount. Uh, because they're not necessarily evil. Um, and of course, everybody knows Dritz, um, the kind of heroic, chaotic, good drow from uh, the Forgotten Realms. So it is possible for them to be to be not evil. Um, I, I think I would I would do the a little bit of the same. So I would make them um, not necessarily evil, but a bend towards it in a way. Um, and uh, I do like the idea of certain elves having longer kind of thin ears. Um, I don't know if I would make my wood elves like that or if I would make my drow like that, but I kind of like that idea uh, physically of, of the kind of longer elf ears on certain elf races, not on all of them, but on certain ones. Um, I'm having to turn my mini upside down to get to the cloak. Probably have to take off the stand as usual. Uh, but that's a great question. I'm sure in the uh, in the chat you guys are chatting about that a lot. I'd love to hear what some of those some of those ideas are. You know, and I do like the idea of like the high elves having a bit of a disdain for dark elves, but neither of them really being evil necessarily you know and, and and matt does a lot of that in his in his world right across exandria where certain monstrous races that you have been kind of brought up thinking are evil aren't evil necessarily they have evil within their their community and their race but they're not all inherently evil um i like that kind of concept and worldview
into here. And I'm just making sure that I catch all of the primed areas so that I'm not leaving any primer showing uh, in the recesses. Again, it's hard to do in some cases, but especially when you have to get behind kind of a cloak where you don't want to hit a body area. There we go. Just kind of sometimes have to jam your your brush in there and then touch things up later. I do have to come in here a little bit. Oh, I missed some purple back here. Or some heavy violet rather. for me okay uh, I am gonna go ahead and um, I did miss this is where you kind of start going around the miniature and painting other colors and realizing oh I missed kind of that area of that miniature so notice I missed some metal kind of around his bracer on the white side so go in and touch that up Now, Yana is still wet. That purple is still drying. So I'm just going to let that dry a bit more before I add any washes or anything. So on Janus, I'm going to go ahead and start to paint his skin. Um, actually, I'm going to go with hair first because it is going to... Um, just touching up some purple here that I missed. I may have rubbed it off with my finger. Again, as, as it dries, folks, you'll see, you'll find areas of primed miniature that you missed. And that is often because paint shrinks as it dries and therefore kind of shrinks out of the recesses sometimes. And other times it's because the paint is glossy and, you know, it, it's kind of a weird effect that it has on your eyes when you have a gloss on something. Um... I am going to put this back in the mini holder to save my, my fingers from cramping up and uh, so I don't rub off anymore. I am going to use heavy blue gray, which is another extra opaque color, and that is going to be for the skin. It's a little gunky, so I'm just going to shake it up real good here. Oh, Gary Diamonds, of course, uh, one of the, the, the pirate of the deceitful squid in our revelry community um he says what do you do when you get frustrated with a design that's just not working for you have you ever chosen to start over on a mini um i'm assuming you mean like um started over painting a miniature again um not started over necessarily but if i get frustrated with something and i'm not quite liking the way that i've i'm the color choices i've made or whatever i'll take a step away so i'll say you know what I'll do this later. Um, take a step back, come back to it. And, and I mean, that's with any of the art that I tend to do. I will take a step back from that art piece um, because when you come back, it, it looks different um, after some time for me anyways. It's really weird, but I'll step away from something, come back and go, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Or, or oh, okay, now I know, you know, I have new... Um, uh, approach or or a new strategy for it or um, yeah new inspiration whatever the case may be I will step away from it that's what I would typically do I wouldn't necessarily start over I would just paint over those areas again um, if I don't like the way that it's going so gray I've used that heavy blue gray on the hair um, as a base coat which isn't quite different from the the primer but is different enough um, and I might as well, while I'm here, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Um, I was going to use it for the base, but for the base, for me, I want to use the uh, somber gray with a black wash because I feel like that look feels a lot more like kind of underdark sort of coloring for the, 
the ground. Uh, I am going to go ahead, though, and base coat Yana's hair here in that heavy blue-gray while I'm at it. Why not? From Trolls Medin, Trolls Medin, uh, do you know if they will make a dwarf druid mini? What mini would you recommend using in the meantime? Um, I wonder, have they made a dwarf druid? I don't think they have. And a dwarf druid is really interesting because that is, a, in my experience, a very uncommon choice. Uh, but I like that, a dwarf druid. Um, but any of the dwarf uh, miniatures that they have uh, would be decent enough. WizKids, if you look up, if you go to upm.wizkids.com I believe for unpainted miniatures UPM um, you can search dwarf and it'll bring up all the dwarf miniatures that they have um, and you can choose kind of see what's, what's there and then order it from your local game store um, but uh, I can't think of one specifically off the top of my head right now that I would use for a dwarf druid um, but if I think of one I will absolutely let you know uh, from Awesome Timmy, uh, are you looking forward to the release of Baldur's Gate 3? I actually haven't, haven't, oh, you guys are going to, oh, jeez, just breaking stuff. You guys are going to, I don't want to say hate me for this, but be surprised. I played the first Baldur's Gate, and I haven't played Baldur's Gate since. Um, it's funny because when you're in video games, you end up playing a lot less video games than you ever did. Uh, before um, and so when I left video games I kind of left that hobby um, I mean I followed video games for some time after but because D&D is so time consuming I just don't have time for video games um, and because of course D&D is my career as well as my passion and hobby um, that's why it takes a long time and being a, a DM all DMs out there um, you know it becomes difficult to kind of make time for everything so for me uh, my chosen passion and hobby, I, I, I choose to put it all into into this. My son is into video games, though, uh, and I may check out Baldur's Gate 3 when it comes out uh, because, I, because it is D&D related. I just don't have a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm going to go ahead and paint her skin now uh, real quick um, before I add some washes. Somber gray for drow skin is my favorite. It's this kind of bluish dark gray it's a wonderful paint um lunchbox 7979 good year uh asks i have a lot of people interested in starting DD. i am thinking a pre-written campaign would be a good start any advice on that yes 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 pre-written campaign would be a good start and i would start with a starter box campaign if it's your first time dming ever and if it's their first time playing ever um, because they're really easy to kind of get your head around. Um, it comes with everything that you need to kind of start a campaign. And then from there, from that starter adventure, you can choose any pre kind of a generated um, adventure setting and take them there after those. But uh, Lost Minds of Fendelver um, is a starter kit. Um, I know that's an adventure in it. I don't know what the actual adventure it's called. It's, I forget what the actual... Um, starter kit is called is it Lost Minds of Fendelver? if you guys can post it um, for them that would be great because um, it would be good to, to know exactly what the adventure itself is called because I forget now uh, but then they have another starter box that they just released recently which is also looks really great and D&D &D, again it will come with dice it will come with a DM screen, it'll come with basic rules, it'll come with everything you need to try it. And that's a good way to kind of try it to see if you like it. Uh, and then once you've kind of decided if you like it, you can dive right in to another predetermined uh, or pre-written campaign. Um, Horde of the Dragon Queen from the whole Tiamat series is really a, gr a great, for me, was really great for getting back into DMing and into D&D. That was a good pre-existing campaign that I started my group on um, Sentinels of the Storm uh, sorry not Sentinels of the Storm <laughs> um, Storm King's Thunder is another good one uh, but I think less so for starting DM in my opinion 
um, just because of balancing. It leaves a lot of balancing to, to the DM, and it's really tough on the players. Um, like, meaning, um, you know, it's a pretty deadly campaign. So I would say maybe not that for a first time. Um, but yeah, that's what I would suggest. Start with one of the D&D starter boxes. Um, I would suggest our adventure boxes, <laughs> but because that is a great way to start DMing. But unfortunately, right now, they are on hold, but you can go to um, www.realmsmith.tv to check out the information on them um, for potentially when we come back and are back in business for those. So. Okay. All right, so she is all base coded now, uh, except for, you know what, I might as well do her base as well so that she's completely base coded and then we'll just do a black wash over everything. I would typically have a sepia wash, but I didn't include it in my paint list. And then I realized, hey, this light leather would have been great with a sepia wash, but it's okay. We can just adjust. We'll use a black wash. It'll just be darker leather. And then we can highlight it as, as wanted, as desired. But again, this is somber gray as a base coat for her base. And I just like this, I really like this somber gray color for, for underdark. Uh, sometimes I'll use the steel gray, which is even kind of more blue. The only thing though is that these characters are existing outside of the Underdark, their adventurers and the revelry, or adventurers and pirates in the revelry, so um, I want them to be able to look good on all on all surfaces, so I'm gonna stick to this summer gray instead. Uh, another question from Aqua. Uh, how do you paint such a teeny details with Go, without going cross-eyed. <laughs> I may be a little cross-eyed, um, but um, one thing that I really like to do and is highly recommended from the pros and people who do even artwork, not necessarily just for painting, is make sure that when you're painting, you have something on in the background. Typically, when I'm, well, like right now, I can look at the screen um, that I use as my kind of my monitor while I'm streaming, um, but or my computer screen or this, but it really helps your eyes and eye strain if you can have an area um, that is further away than the mini that you're painting to focus on, reset your focus, and then go back. Um, and I'll watch Critical Role, for example, while I paint um, somewhere in the background um, so that I can kind of um, refocus as I go. But that's a, a really big, really good tip on how to reduce eye strain from detailed work like this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and paint Janice's skin. And again, it's not a huge difference between this and the base coat on the hair, but as we start to take them in different directions, as we add white to the hair, uh, and as we add washes to the skin, it'll create that divide that we need to separate them. Like that. Okay, that is the skin. And then finally, I think we are done with, oh no we're not. I forgot to do the base on this one. And these miniatures will be seen tomorrow night on our, on our session, so check it out at 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night on our Twitch channel to see these miniatures in action on camera alongside our adventurers. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. 
Roman Wolf asks, other than your own, of course, do you have a favorite streaming D&D &D group to watch or follow? <laughs> um, I am uh, absolutely 100% a huge, massive fan of uh, Critical Role. That is my main source of live stream that I watch. Um, it's what got me into streaming. Uh, and it is, you know, I just, yeah, the guys are so great. Matt is such a good dude. I uh, love the story. And now that we're in that world, um, it's even more important that I do. So because of that, um, I don't have a lot of time to watch other ongoing streams because, I mean, we're streaming four, four nights a week here at Realm Smith. Um, plus, I'm DMing one of those streams, um, which takes a lot of time and all of that other stuff. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to follow other other streams. I did watch Dice Camera Action for a long time. Um, I do catch any Acquisitions Inc. stuff when it comes out. Those guys are hilarious and wonderful. I've had the, the wonderful opportunity to see it live twice, um, which, you know, was great. And of course, then I'll watch um, streams like D&D Live, which is coming up this month. Um, and I was at D&D Live last year and I actually met Jerry Holkins and a bunch of other people um, who do stream. So I do kind of support the one-offs when they happen uh, and I do watch um, I do watch kind of the large events but it's really hard for me to kind of take the time to watch any other ongoing streams unfortunately. I know there are some great ones out there. The Dungeon Dudes one is awesome. Um, that's another one of my favorites. Um, and they're good guys from Toronto, they're Canadian dudes, but again, it's really hard to follow any other streams with all the streaming that we do. So. Okay. Also, the D&D Beyond streams are great too. Uh, B Dave's A Darkened Wish, Wish stream is really good. All right, so while Janice dries, I'm going to go ahead and start to add my black wash to the miniature. And this is going to be a wash across the mini. I'm going to use my number two brush for that. I am going to dilute it slightly. That just helps the wash to flow a bit better. And again, with washes, they are intended to add depth and shadow to miniatures. So um, that is what we will do here. I'm just gonna basically put it on the miniature and then we're gonna navigate it into the recesses. Um, you're not really brushing it or painting it on. You're basically putting it on the mini and then manipulating it into the areas that it needs to go. I do that across the entire mini, including the base. And this black wash is going to go on everything except the hair. I don't think I want it in the hair because I want to it to be bright white, and this will probably darken it too much, but we will see. can already see what it's doing to the miniature and then we'll come back in and lighten it with highlights after the fact and work back up those colors and then we'll have a really cool contrast I'm trying to get her face and not her hair a little tiara thing happening here All right. 
Indeed. Good stuff. There we go. Now, it has darkened the miniature significantly. That's okay, though. That was the intention. Um, I'm going to do the rest of the base here. Um, when we come back in, we start to lighten it again. Then you really see the details start to pop. There we go. All right. On to Janice. Question from Deacon Blues Hamilton. What is your technique for doing a deep blue black, like a cloak of the shadows? Mine will either look too blue or too black, never that highlight of blue. Um, the way I do blue black is I use somber gray, which is what I'm using now. I do a pretty heavy wash of black wash. And then I work up the color from that to um, steel blue um, is sometimes my uh, kind of approach. There's different ways to do it, though. You can also do I would never do a black base. Um, you can do like a deep blue if you want it to be really kind of blue, uh, black blue. Um, like a navy, then a wash of blue and then work up that blue again. There's another option. Um, geez, there's many, many kind of options, but I, I would suggest never starting with a black base. Because when you do that, there's nowhere to go from there. Um, I like finding a middle ground and then adjusting from there and going lighter and darker to kind of meet in the middle um, rather than starting from black and then going up from there. If you're looking for just a quick solution, you could do a black base and then just dry brush kind of a navy blue to a lighter blue on it. Um, navy to a, like a mid-tone blue even would work, but uh, for me, that's that's not my preferred method. Preferred method is definitely to start with like a dark gray or dark blue color and then work up from there. Almost done with this wash. You can see when you add this black wash, it's really dark on camera right now, but um, how it really brings out the detail in the face there. Okay, we're just gonna let that dry. Um, while well, that dries on both minis, now washes take a while to dry. That's the, the only thing about washes, they take quite a bit of time. Uh, but while that's washing, I might go ahead and highlight um, Yana's hair here real quick. While well, I take another question. Aqua, do you have any characters in the works that you're looking forward to playing. I don't right now, actually. Um, I am looking forward to paint, to playing a lot of my NPCs in my campaign, um, uh, but those I can't really talk about. Um, there's one NPC that is going to be revealed probably this session, tomorrow, night session that I have been, that's been in the works for a while and is pretty central to the story. So I'm excited about that one. but that's all I will say. When it comes to, to PCs, you know, I don't see myself playing um, very much in the next little while, uh, especially, you know, conventions is kind of my opportunity to play in other games um, and other streams and stuff. And unfortunately, right now, that's just not going to happen. So until things kind of get back to normal. All right, I am using dead white here. And I'm just trying to follow some of the contours of the hair to bring a highlight to this hair, kind of make it 
be that really bright sort of drow hair that we all recognize. Oh, Snap at Snap asks, Jason, would you think that Strahd would be an appropriate campaign for a newbie player that recently completed Foundelver? I do not. Um, this is the reason why. Strahd is awesome, and if you want a challenge, then you should play whatever you think your group and your players would like to play. If they're into, like, horror and especially gothic horror and vampires and werewolves and all that fun stuff, then absolutely Strahd would be fun. Um, but it is not an easy campaign to DM um, and also not an easy campaign for newbies. This is the reason. It's deadly. It's intended to be deadly. Um, it's intended to be really dark. So, you know, a newer player who's new to D&D who doesn't quite kind of grasp it, it really depends on your party and it really depends on the players at your table and if you think that they'd enjoy it. The other thing is, is it's quite sandboxy, which means... There's a lot of options as to what to do and when, and for new players, that can be a little daunting, and for new DMs, it's also very daunting um, because there's a lot of prep, and you need to know kind of what to prep and how to prep, so I would absolutely say it is not a starter kind of adventure or for starting DMs or players, but if that's really what you want to play because you love the subject matter, then I'd say do it. Um, and you can also adjust it as necessary, so... You know, and, and if you want to run it, watching our stream for Strahd kind of will give you some ideas of how to kind of run it um, for your players in a easier sort of fashion. Well, white on the purple, it's okay. We will get to that later when we do highlights. You know, just gotta highlight the hair coming down the side. Like that. You can see that that hair is really sticking out now. That everything's kind of a bit darker. Which is good. And the hair also comes out in front. I also got a little bit of hair on, a little bit of white on the face. That's okay again we're going to come back and adjust that so there we go but that drow hair is really sticking out okay um i think first things first i'm going to put Janice down again because he is the most wet of the two uh i and this wash is still drying on the cloak there but it has dried for the most part on the armor. So I'm gonna get leather brown again at this point. Oh, it's still wet in my palette, so I'll just use that. I'm gonna use my dry brush. And for those of you that are new to painting and don't know what dry brushing is, if you load a dry brush with paint and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel, and then basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go against the grain and just rub it ever so slightly or run it ever so slightly across the detail and then it picks up the higher most detail leaving kind of the darker color in the recesses. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just doing that across the entire miniature. Um, to bring out kind of those leather colors again. Um, and then I am finding that this brush is pulling a little bit of paint here. So I'm actually just going to go in with that color and kind of pull out the edges of some of the more prominent areas. The toe there, um, we'll do it over here as well because we used a black wash. It really darkened those leather areas and I didn't necessarily want them that dark. Um, our Discord is just going nuts right now. Something's going on. If you can all hear my phone buzzing it's because <laughs> those are all discord conversations that are happening <laughs> there it is again 
Or those are all questions coming through. Haha. -ha. That makes sense. Oh, Bruno. Something Bruno didn't like over there. All right, Nubandius, Nubanidus, uh, how are you enjoying DMing in Wildmount, especially after a few months? I considered using it as the setting for a campaign, but I felt a bit intimidated, so instead decided to translate Ghosts of Salt Marsh into Forgotten Realms instead, as I was less familiar and could adjust whatever. That's a great question, um, and a good call. I mean, making it your own and adjusting is what this game is all about. Um, I personally uh, had, a, uh, had a bit of a tough time, actually. Um, in Wild Mart first. I'm using Bone White Guys with a mix of Leather Brown to add some more highlights to the leather uh, armor. Um, I had a hard time at first because I, I, I think I have Gothic... I have a really grasp, and I'm able to kind of imagine Gothic fantasy fairly well and very easily. Um, uh, and... Um, And, um, what was I going to say? Sorry. Um, yeah, I found it a little hard because I kind of understand medieval fantasy and gothic fantasy. And so those settings are really kind of, they come easily to me. Um, just from even an imagination perspective. But when you're dealing with pirates and jungles and things like that, it's just I'm less confident. So it took me a little while to really get into and catch my, kind of catch my bearings on it. Uh, but I think I have a bit of a, a hold on it now. Uh, I ended up kind of doing my best to um, kind of engulf myself in movies of that sort. Um, even made a joke the other day um, when I was uh, interviewing B. Dave Walters about the fact that, you know, sometimes... Um, sometimes inspiration comes from the most unlikely places. And uh, I was watching the, the new Dora the Explorer movie and I got some jungle ideas and jungle puzzle ideas from that movie. Um, and so, yeah, I just started watching like Indiana Jones and The Mummy and a bunch of other kind of fun movies that I thought would give me sort of some ideas for some things and ended up actually being really good. So, um, it took me a little while to kind of get into it. Uh, I love the setting. I love the world. I love what Matt's done with it. I love that, you know, my favorite, um, my favorite uh, live stream is set in the same world that we're running now. That's a huge bonus for me. And, and there's a lot of um, source material there that I can pull from. Uh, but it did take me a little time to kind of get into it. Um, and so, um, but I'm really, really enjoying it now. Okay, so we've got the purple base there. Um, Janice is dry now, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and start to highlight some of the purple here because those are kind of the most um, obvious areas of the miniature uh, and the biggest areas. I'm, I'll go back and do that on Yana as well. Um, One sec. Bruno is livid today. I don't know what's going on with him. Okay, so just, and as you can see, I'm basically going back in now with the base, um, with the base purple, and I am going to start to highlight some of the folds here um, like this um, and what this is doing obviously is just giving me it's bringing the purple back up a little bit in brightness um, 
because these miniatures tend to be, I mean, they are drow, so they are darker colors. Typically, you don't have that kind of lighter skin color or, 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 or more rich skin tone um, across all of these skin tones to really bring out some life in the miniature. So um, we have to do that in other ways. And one of the ways is to add kind of these lighter, more vibrant colors into other areas of the miniature. Um, and I think this is a good way to do it. Um, so we're just going to highlight that with a little bit of that. Then we're going to add some Warlord Purple, which is kind of a pinky kind of purple color. We're going to add a little bit of that to the heavy violet that we have going here. Uh, and then we're going to start some highlights with that color. And doing the same thing, but just focusing on little smaller areas now kind of the higher detail so staying out of the recesses and just pulling out kind of the areas that would show more of the highlight or more of this kind of lighter color um, is the key here Then, uh, using a little less purple and a little bit more, or sorry, a little less heavy violet and a little bit more um, warlock purple, I'm going to do even smaller areas, like so. And again, I'm just pulling in some of these highlights. Perfect. All right. And again, that is just going to give some color to this drow. Um, next, I'm going to go back in um, with, now that we've done all the black wash over all the metal, now the metal has been muted right down uh, and looks a little dirty um, and kind of messy. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some silver and we're going to go back in and because I, I find that drow and images of drow, they tend to have kind of nice gleaming, nice gleaming kind of silver armor. Um, so we're going to go back in and highlight some of those areas with that color. Uh, question from the D&D chat. The, the 10 cent gent <laughs> says, what would water deep dragon heist be a good follow on to Fendelver? Um, I haven't played Waterdeep uh, Dragon Heist. I know it's a bit of a different thing. I love the Waterdeep setting. Uh, I have had some streams in the Waterdeep world. And Sentinels of the Storm, they, they, they um, visited Waterdeep and the Awning Portal and all that stuff. So I love the lore. Um, but I don't know if it would be a good, a good starting after Fendelver. Uh, you'll have to ask. Maybe the community in the chat can kind of help with people who have had... Uh, experience with it I have not unfortunately so I can't I can't speak to that but I do love the setting I love the concept um, that's kind of like a heist heist sort of kind of um, setting um, and subject matter um, and it just pulls it out again a bit uh, out of the typical D&D tropes um, into something very interesting and cool I love that Again, with the silver, I'm just going back in and highlighting, staying out of the recesses, and just highlighting some of the armor here to bring it back into the shiny metal it should be. Now, if this was um, like goblins or something like that, I would probably leave it, leave the armor dark and kind of dingy and dirty, but 
these dark elves take a lot of pride in their in their armor so we're gonna make sure that is um, evident and reflected in our paint scheme also gonna do the same for his sword blade And you can see how already things are starting to pop a bit more. But you're still getting the effect of the wash in the recesses still. The draw are very civilized um, and would take very good care of their weapons and armor in my that's how I imagine it anyways. did go over the leather parts a bit, but I'm gonna come back in and touch that up anyways a little bit. The only other area here that I haven't done yet is the chest plate. Janice does have a breastplate um, as discussed in the last session. So I'm going to uh, highlight that a bit. There we go. You can see the, the armor. Once we add some lighter colors to the skin, we'll be able to see that a bit better um, as we go. Uh, at this point, I am going to grab some um, some leather brown from my palette, and I'm going to go in and these areas that I did the heavy brown before, or heavy sienna. I'm going to come back in and actually do let. Um, leather brown has kind of an edge around that and that's just going to lighten that armor up a bit you can see what i did kind of on the there on the front of the armor there also going to come around on the leg bits on the side on the quads like that got a little bit on the purple cloak and I'm just going to use a brush I haven't used in a bit and wipe it off. There we go. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to highlight the top of the boot with that leather as well. He is a little dark so I'm just trying to bring some of that some of that lighter some of those lighter tones back in. I am going to highlight the kind of the cross uh, stitching or the the rope tied around his scabbard there he's getting there he's almost done I think as far as I want to take him anyways um then I'm going to grab a little glorious gold on him we've not used gold yet and just to mix it up a little bit, I'm gonna paint his belt buckle with gold. And again, that will add some more delineation and interest there. I'm also gonna paint the cross guard and the pommel in glorious gold. A lot of painting miniatures is, is about um, differentiating certain areas and just making other areas more prominent than others um, catch the eye. Because the pommel and cross guard are gold, I'm also going to paint the end of the scabbard gold. And of course the pommel, as I mentioned. Like that. And that'll stand out a bit more from the rest of it. Okay, now for the face. This is where things get a little interesting. Um, for the face, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in. 
and do the eyes first so that I can fix them after if I mess up. Um, because we've just base coated and washed at this point. So I'm gonna go in and fill the eyes. And to do the eyes, I usually come in. This isn't the best brush. It's got a bit of a curve at the end. You want a straight brush. There. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in from the edge. And, oh, way too much. A little bit wet. Come in, you can see what I did there. Massive eye because water came in from the ferrule, but all I did was wipe it out with my large dry brush. Water gets stuck in this area, folks. Um, and then when you go to paint, it'll drip into the area. And with eyes, you need a very fine tip. Like that. And you can see, add to the white of the eyes there, and then I can close it in later with somber gray. Now, I've painted a big area there. You can see it looks like a huge mess right there on the on the right eye. But that's okay because I'm gonna go ahead with um, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use somber gray which is the darkest color I have and mix in some black wash to, to, to darken a bit more for the pupil. Um, there we go. It's a lot of paint on that brush. Too much. And what I'm going to do, nah, that's not going to work. I have changed my mind. Before I did it, I'm actually going to use heavy violet for the people. I forgot I had violet, and sometimes drow have purple eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the pupil like that. You can see how fine the detail is, but I've added the pupil. And the pupil is just basically a line through the eye. And one there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with somber gray. So make sure that this ferrule and this brush are really, really well dried. Um, and then I'm just gonna go in and close up this eye. Like that. There you go. It's really fine, not sure if you can see that, but. And then, continue with somber gray around the face. We're gonna hit the cheekbones, the chin, bottom of the chin here, across the back, cheekbone on this side, top of the brow, tip of the ears. Of course, tip of the nose. Top lip, and I'm basically just working in this somber gray. Like that. Okay. Then, I'm going to mix in some of this steel gray into my somber gray. Steel gray is a slightly lighter. So I'm just gonna use steel gray and then just mix a little bit of somber gray in there. So it's not as stark a difference. And I'm just gonna a little bit on the chin, tip of the nose, cheekbone. See the water starting to pool on the ferrule there. So when you see that starting to happen, just Dab it on your paper towel and get that off there, or it's gonna be a disaster for you. A Little bit of that steel gray mix on the tip of the ears, and that is the face of that 
Drow or Janus is who we're using it for. Okay. Um, then I'm going to use a little bit of tan. I'm going to bring Janus to completion, and then we'll go back to a little bit of tan, which is another game color color. Mix it with a little bit of heavy sienna. And then I'm just going to highlight the gauntlets. I'm going to switch brushes here because this one is leaking a bunch of water here. So, and I don't want to mess up everything. Um, sometimes I can just use your, you can just use your hand too. I didn't say that earlier, but there we go. And we're just up kind of, there we go. Highlighting the gloves. Go around the side here in the front. There we go. All right. I'm going to add some to the boot, too, because I like that tone better than the tone I used on the boot. So I'm just going to cover the highlight that I used on the boot with this tan mix. There we go. All right. That's good. Okay, then, last on Janus. is we're going to uh, go ahead. So we're just noticing some areas that I missed. Of course, happens every time. Just missed a little the bit of the boot at the bottom here. And also uh, a little bit of the metal. There we go. Just fixed up the bottom there a bit. Uh, and then uh, I want to put a, a, a rim around the cloak here, and I think I'm going to use gold for that. I was going to use leather brown, but I've decided instead that I want to use a little bit of glorious gold. So uh, being very careful, I'm going to run because of all that um, detail work that we've done now on that cloak. I'm just going to run my brush along the edge. Sorry, I'm out of focus there. And then just add this shining brilliant line. Of course, Janice is an emissary or an advisor to the Play King. So because of that, he would have some wealth, um, especially as a revelry pirate. So we're just going to go ahead and show that wealth, wealth off a little bit here. And that just separates the cloak from the rest of the miniature. There we go. Thanks for the follow. And just finish it off on this end. And there we go. Janice is complete. And again, it's not a fantastic paint job. It's just enough to get us by to get another miniature on the table. And again, two minis in two hours ain't bad. All right, next. Uh, I'll answer a question because I've been focusing kind of in turbo speed here. There's tons of questions here. Sorry. From the DD chat, what is your preferred method to glue the base to the miniature? I use super glue. Um, Torpote asks, I was wondering, I really want to start painting minis. I saw a lot of starting kit from different brands. Could you recommend a brand or paint for a beginner? Uh, Vallejo. And I'm not just saying that because of my sponsor. I followed, um, I used to use another brand. And then I tried Vallejo and I haven't gone back since. So um, uh, I would absolutely check out the starter kits from Vallejo. Um, they do, as we've talked about here at the store, 
We do have um, Vallejo kits coming out that are specifically designed for the WizKids line of miniatures. Um, when that happens, I would suggest that you take a look at those um, as they are starter kits, there are technique kits and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, their paint is amazing. So I would absolutely suggest Vallejo. Again, not just because they're my sponsor, they were my preferred paint well before they were, and most people would agree um, that they are the best paint out there. So, okay. Um, now I'm doing the same thing on Yana that I did on Janice, which is to take that heavy purple straight out of the bottle with a little bit of water, and I'm just re-highlighting the peaks on the cloak here. Just like this. And I'm just going to continue to do that across all of the areas that have uh, that purple color. So that is going to be the cloak and it's going to be her tabard area. Um, from the D&D chat, Ordof asks, is tie, um, Tomb of Annihilation a good start for someone new to D&D? Um, good question. I don't have, I've not run to a Tomb of Annihilation. I love the setting. Uh, it's very similar to Wildmount with the jungles and stuff. Um, so I would definitely check it out. I know Chult is a lot of fun. It, they, they, it's really well supported by D&D um, with a lot of different products including miniatures from WizKids, so I would absolutely check that out. Uh, I don't, I can't speak, unfortunately, as to whether or not it's a good starting adventure. Um, you'll have to find out from the community. Hopefully, people in the chat can kind of give you an idea if that is the case. Because um, I unfortunately can't speak to it, I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to go to the mix of Warlock Purple and Heavy Violet real quick. And as I've mentioned before so many times on this show, um, you know, I paint miniatures based on the value that they'll give me at the table and the time that they'll be seen. So if there's an ongoing NPC, now of course these are NPCs, but, um, and they're for our, our, our mods to play. Um, but I wanted to show you how to kind of batch paint some drow today. Um, but, you know, for, for example, the frost giant that I painted on stream, uh, I took three episodes to paint him because he was the model I used and kind of modeled after Harshnag from Storm King's Thunder. Um, and for that reason, I wanted to spend a bit more time because he was an, uh, a, a reoccurring NPC that would be seen on the table a bunch. Um, and so we took, you know, three sessions to paint him to be able to kind of show that off. But for the most part, the reason for this show is we're not winning any, um, you know, contests with these minis. We're not interested. They're not show pieces necessarily. They're they're basically to get stuff onto the table that we're happy with in a decent amount of time so that it's not daunting. That is kind of why I do this um, to show you folks. And then I take sometimes on the um, Kraken or on the storm giant, I take a little bit longer to show you folks kind of what you what is possible, what you're able to do, given more time. But um, the 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 point of this show is to show you how to get decent results quickly in a manageable time period um, to take away some of that kind of fear of painting minis uh, that exists. All right, so I'm I'm mixing tan with some heavy sienna, and I am highlighting the front and side of her pants here like that um, and that just kind of it's gonna bring out that color a bit more uh, I am also going to use some tan to highlight the crossbow and we're just gonna run it along the edge here see how I did that if you run it along the edge it'll just catch it on the edge the front on the bolt. We'll paint the drawstring another color. The bowstring, not the drawstring. The bowstring, a different color. Make sure you get the bolts that are under. It's like a repeating crossbow she's got here. Um, like that. Okay, and you can see how we've highlighted that. 
crossbow in her hand. Uh, we are going to come back with some metal in there, some silver to give some further highlights. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. Grab some of this silver. And I'm going to get the spikes on the front. I want those to be metal. Um, the bolt head. And then these little studs or spikes in the front of this thing. Make it look real mean, real dangerous. Like that. I imagine that would be metal in the front too. Perfect. I like it. And then um, for a drawstring, I'm going to grab some of this bone white here. And then just literally run my brush along the edge to catch it like that on one side then the other and there we go and you have a bowstring okay um Purple is done. Oh, I didn't do any highlights for the purple on the front of her, of her tabard here, so I'm just going to do that real quick. There we go. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and do her eyes here again um, because we want to make sure that we capture them before we do too much work on the face in case we mess up. There's one. There's two. These are really messed up. Way too big and in the wrong spot, but we will go ahead and adjust that. You can see what I did here. I just put worked in some white there. Um, and then I'm going to grab that purple. And create a little pupil through there. And on this side, like that. And then come back in with that somber gray as we discussed before. And we're going to brighten that face right up here. As you can see. So we're going to do cheeks. And this will close in her eye real nicely. Chin, nose. There we go. I did miss some a piece of hair here, so we'll go back in and fix that. Oh. Put that is Yana's face so far. Give it a little bit of hair here that I've forgotten or I missed. That kind of comes down along here. A little wisp of hair. And then again, some of that steel gray. And we're just gonna hit the tip of the nose, chin, and cheekbones. Sorry, it's hard to do this detail work close to the camera because of the, the way that my um, brushes need to kind of lie. So that is that so far. Uh, she's looking okay. Um, and then I'm just going to go in with some gold just to add some details here. Just a couple of details. All right. So we've got 
this kind of tiara thing on her head. I'm actually going to make that gold. Make it pop a little bit. It's fun. It goes across kind of under her hair here. I'll make that gold there and then across here a bit there. So there. Then I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to make these kind of these things here on the back. Almost like tassels. Um, details. I'm gonna make those gold as well. Maybe she uses her cloak like a like a weapon, with almost like blades at the end that she can kind of whirl around and hit people with. That'd be cool. Like that. Um. I think she's pretty much done. I'm just going to take a little bit more silver here, and I'm just going to add a bit of a border along the top of her armor here. There. There we go. I'm going to call her done as well. There we go, folks. That is a wrap on... Jana, Yana, and Janice. That is two drow in two hours. Again, this is speed painting, so we're not going for perfection. We're just going uh, to the point where we can get some decent miniatures on the table for our tabletop RPG games, uh, specifically D and D. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, um, we are so thankful for your. Um... Hey, that's my phone on camera. <laughs> Uh, we are so thankful for your support and for following us and all of that fun stuff. As I said, tomorrow on uh, Tides of Wildmount, you will see Yanis and Jan Yana. I always mess this up. Yana and Janice on stream. Janice is currently with the party. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, 5, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, and it's going to be nuts. We are um, approaching the pinnacle of this season and we are so very excited for all of it. Um, you can follow us uh, or subscribe to join the revelry as usual. All the information you need for that is on our Discord. You can check that out when you have some time. Uh, and then a Tuesday, like I said, we will have behind the screen. It will be a Q&A session with potentially a special guest, hopefully. Um, and then Thursday with Joel OJ. And then we are back here for Nolzers on Sunday. You guys have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay home for now. Uh, responsibly social distance as we will be doing here at Realm Smith. Um, here in, in Ontario, they have said that we can have a circle of 10 people within it that we, um, friends and family. Um, so that is really great, which means it's very exciting for the future of Realm Smith and what we do here. Have a good night, guys. Bye.